Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiye Allah, atiye Rasul, oğlul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisu, daifu, zalim, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that He keeps us around. <laughs> it's Allah's rahmah and mercy and alhamdulillah the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is the power. Without that love you can't function, no himma, no zeal, no excitement. And that Allah when He wants to grant a gift it's the gift of being with awliya, those whom distance themselves from awliya, they distance themselves from Allah's ni'mat, God's blessings. They facilitate an ease in our life and bring down emanations and rahmah. And alhamdulillah Allah granted us a life to eat from their tables, drink from their tables and to accompany their realities and their teachings. And that their great knowledges and immense ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad can dress and bless anything. And that's what these knots and these salawats and all these realities that are being recited always a reminder for ourselves that if we took a path of nothingness and that Allah's rahmah and mercy take us into the presence of those whom He has favoured that's everything, means that there are groups of people that feel that they can lift themselves by themselves by their actions. So they do all of the actions of Islam, the usul and all that's been mandated for us and through their Belief is that… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh With what they do, they will raise themselves, take themselves out of difficulties and hardships. And in reality when Allah wants to guide and real guidance, there's no guidance except through Allah and real guidance is when Allah destines your life to be in the hands of Waliun Murshidun, we said in Surat Al-Kahf, whom Allah grants Waliun Murshidun, He has granted them a path of light and whom He has not given them light has not given them waliyun murshidun. Means that their wilayat and sainthood, their nearness to the heart of Allah defined by their nearness to the heart and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Allah has opened for them their faculties to guide, that they have been guided and as a result of their guidance and their yaqeen 
Allah has called them into service, Prophet has called them into service and that their shaykhs have called them into service that guide. The difference of the guide and others because it's not a disrespect it's just a different reality. Those whom haven't achieved the realities of this light and this ishq and this love and they haven't achieved the realities of true guidance in which they have ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen and they live and breathe haqqu yaqeen that their knowledges are of a certainty and reality their heart has opened to be Ainul Yaqeen, they see it, witness it and understand it. The Ain not only serves your vision has to be witnessing the reality but Ain that Allah dressed you, dressed you from Al-Aleem, this two-edged sword of Ain. One whom sees Ain is I and Ain from Al-Aleem and Alim. That Allah dressed them with the sifats of knowledges, dress their heart to see the knowledge and it's a haqq for them. So they know it with a certainty. Other forms of guidance, they tell you something on Jummah or they may sit in halakas and speak but they haven't witnessed it. It hasn't become a certainty, it's more a philosophy. They read it, not really quite sure, hoping one day to experience it and then go out and talk to people on the hopes that they stay motivated because they're still waiting for something to happen to them. And the danger is that they may lose heart in their process because they're waiting, they're teaching, giving hope, trying to spread hope, trying to spread faith. But yet they're waiting for the event to happen to themselves and in the process they may lose a little bit of speed and a whole lot of energy. We've had many in 35 years, you know how many people we've had of people big time representative of this or that or… And they came and they sat and said, oh, I'm losing my heart, I don't feel anything shaykh because they haven't trained in this way and they still give guidance and they talk to people and do all sorts of things. And that's the difference, the one whom, whom has read and is knowledgeable but not yet experienced. And hoping by those knowledges that they propagate and teach will one day open for them and open for anyone else who's listening with them, still hoping. But they lose energy along the way, they lose hope along the way and that becomes difficulty, tariqah's guidance is different. Naqshbandiya's miracle is knowledge, Naqshbandiya's ijazah which they don't give out is from wa'iz that they have permission to guide. And the reason they have permission is because they know that the heart of that one was opened. The realities that were poured into their heart, what their heart witnessed, it became a haqq for them. Then the shaykhs issue an ijazah, not ijazah to do zikr but an ijazah for guidance is different. You can go to a shaykh and say, can I have ijazah for zikr? Yes, okay have zikr anywhere you want in the city. Ijazah for guidance is very rare because of their seclusions, their trainings, their crushings, their difficulties that have been put upon them. They've uh, sent them through tumbling machines to see if they always come straight back up like a coast guard ship. You can't be fuluk and go out and say, I'm going to go and rescue people and the first storm your ship is out and under, under the ocean. So what kind of fuluk was that? And it's interesting that Allah describes these souls in Surat Al Yaseen, Fulukul Mashkhoon from awliya's knowledges from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that we have created these fuluqs, mashkhoon that there are immense energies emanating from them and those are the big ones and 
Allah give another verse, and we've created similar to them a fuluq, smaller ships. And the reason for the ship is the reason for this reality of the souls is that they carry people. So the one whom is, is just reading, studying, hoping to achieve and then dealing with people is no guidance at this level of understanding. At this level of understanding these guides they see, they have witnessed the haqqaiqs, they witness events, whatever is happening Allah Prophet is showing them. And as a result it's 100% true for them. They don't need to be motivated and convinced, they saw it with yaqeen and certainty it's just a matter of how to prepare for it. And that's in every aspect of the haqqaiqs that they teach, the realities that they teach, it's not a philosophy that you teach a teach a teacher that says hopefully one day it opens. No, no, they taught it, they learned it, they understood it, they live it, breathe it, eat it, drink it, come back now and say, do this so this opens. That's why when they talk with people and the people say, Shaykh I'm doing all these things, nothing's opening, that's impossible. They know you're not doing everything. It's not a philosophy here that we, let's see if it works or doesn't work. They know the system, they've been granted ijazah that whomever repeats their system, each one has their own ticket back. When Allah gives the, the ijazah for guidance that what you did and what they certified you for, bring people back with that way, on that path, that tariq. If someone speaks differently we'll hope they have an ijazah and if it works for them we don't care either way. We don't need to hear somebody else's ticket. There's a way that been given, if you do that way you achieve what needs to be achieved. That's why each guide may have their own formula. If the ticket's stamped then you follow that formula you may reach. But if they don't have the ticket stamped that's something completely different, right? Because these awliya and their training they took them to Maqas Siddiq, Surat al-Isra, they entered the gates of truth. Siddiqul Mutlaq dressed them, trained them, blessed them and they left from the gate of truth and they were brought into the presence of Sultan al-Nasira, Sayyidina Muhammad And that Prophet has signed on their certificate. As a result of that signature they bring along people through their teachings, everything that they've given, their curriculum, read this, do this, read this, do this. You can't come back and say, I did these things and it didn't open. No, you're not saying something truthful, you're not doing something or you're adding something else to it. We said before, you know, two years later the person came back and said, oh they're doing all these other hocus pocus stuff, say, oh, you never said these things. So no, I didn't think it matters. It's like a recipe, if every day we tell you this is the ingredients, the only ingredients but you throw five other ingredients into it then not you nor I understand what you've made. So this is the realities of guidance and this is the immense blessings that Allah gives and the guides they specialize for the world of light. They're like a, what do you call the ice glaciers, iceberg. You see only the tip of it and you think it's huge, 
underneath is unimaginable of the size. Means what the benefit of dunya people can be astonished, oh mashaAllah all these benefits of meeting one, studying from one. But what under the ocean of reality is far greater, can't be even imagined. Because we talk today about death, what happens when you die and the angels of death come to question you? Well, common people when the angels of death come they have a lot of questions because their muhasaba will take place there. Everybody has to do their khalwa, the childa, the 40 days and everybody should have lived, lived the life of muhasaba and counting because the muhasaba and muraqaba they go together. Muraqaba to be vigilant and watch over yourself and as you're watching in your life you're taking muhasaba and accounting of yourself. You're meditating, contemplating, means you're continuously day by day trying to resolve and un understand, ask Allah's istighfar for the things that we find within our character and cleaning. If you do your daily bookkeeping you shouldn't have a real difficult time in Allah's audit which is the grave. Those whom they don't live a life of tariqah and truly tariqah means they follow the disciplines, they do the awrahs, the zikrs, they listen to the guidance, they watch the guidances, they're being cleaned by watching the guidances, by watching their associations, entering into the dhikr, all the shaykhs dressings and blessings upon the whole jama'ah wherever they are on this earth. They're being cleaned. When life is not being cleaned will the angels of death then have a lot of questioning and that can be a very difficult experience. Said so even before that the process of death and Malik al-Mawt that when the decree comes that the soul has to be taken, this person is going to die, the angel of death has to come to take the soul out of the physicality. If somebody didn't train they don't want to go out of their physicality because their nafs has grabbed deep into their reality. Like a maybe a pipe with a tree and its roots. The roots went too deep into everything. Sometimes there's trees by these properties and the root goes so deep it smashes the sidewalk, goes into the house, it's uplifting everything because it's just damaging as it's going. The nafs has that ability to root itself too strong into the soul. For us just to understand the analogy, so the pain of death, the difficulty of death it is based on the soul and the nafs relationship. So imagine all your life you, you kind of thought, oh why those people got to do those kind of things and why do they got to sit and why do they got to commit their time and why, do we, why don't we just go out and have fun? which are 99% of people that don't want to work on anything or think of anything of the death. And then what Prophet described of, of all these events and that's what happens. They go into the grave, the separation of pulling that soul from the body, just the process of pulling it is very painful. The soul completely feels everything more without the body. And as the soul is being pulled and the nafs is being rooted, these things are tearing for us to understand. So just the step of death can be very horrific and the difficulties and the pains of death because the nafs rooted itself in and there has been no cleansing. 
That's before even the questioning and the accounting that going to take place. Just at that level the barakah and the immense blessings of tariqah is that as soon as you enter into the tariqahs there are cleaning service. Their job like the iceberg 90% of their job is unknown to students because it deals with malakut not dunya. And all the shaykhs and all the Muhammadan kingdom which are Budar, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Akhyar, Qawf, uh, Jinn, Malaika all of these categories of saintly souls all have different responsibilities within the Muhammadan kingdom and immense ni'mat from Allah that those whom enter into the tariqahs they begin their wazifas and awrads, they, they take their initiation, they begin to do their practices. Every night assigned to them are spiritual beings that come into the home, come over their bed and begin to clean them. Malaika mutahireen, those whom whom Allah loves, those whom are mutahireen, who are, are clean and beautific. It's not only that you made that intention through your wudu because how beautiful can you be through washing outside when your devil's inside. So there must be a secret in making that intention. It is for the tariqahs that when you entered the tariqahs and you made the intention of your physical wudu that Allah dispenses these awliya and all those whom are under their service that send the cleaning crews in. And then they begin every night cleaning, 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 cleaning and cutting from where the nafs is trying to grow in to the soul. Those whom are Ahlul Basira they see them, they sleep and they say, oh there's all these shadows around me. He said, don't be scared, they're there for work. They're there to clean, 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 clean. Why? Because you're going to be trained on how to bring your soul out. So they must have cut those roots, otherwise nafs won't ever let your soul to go and experience anything. And that's why then Sayyidina Jalaluddin and all their, their poetry described that this dunya is a zendan for us and we are its prisoners. So means that the nafs will imprison the soul and not allow it to experience anything. If left to ourselves we will experience nothing. You'll never uplift yourself to get out of that condition. And the only way to get out of that condition is through the barakah of tariqahs and awliya whom they are the helpers of the kingdom. And as a result from the tools that Allah gives to them of guidance, just some of the understandings of malakut is that when you sleep, you make your intentions for wudu and then you sleep, the cleaning crew is coming. So don't be scared, oh I see all these shadows everything, lie down you're in wudu and get out of the way and they come and they begin to clean, they begin to clean. You become like a sarcophagus that has to be cleaned out, cleaned out, cleaned out, cleaned out, heavy duty cleaning at first because there's big roots trying to grab the soul until after they've done so many times their, their cleaning is basically like polishing. And that's when we talked the night before, then when you do your awrah, do your zikr, do all your, your practices, what's happening is that you leave your gravitational pull. The gravity of dunya is trying to hold you. That was the E equals MC squared. The mass is attracted to the earth. The more your mass is, is loving dunya, and the more dunya is holding you and rooting into you. 
with the zikrs, with the muraqaba, with the spiritual practices. Why? Because every dhikr you make like a fire onto your soul to burn your nafs. So you're bringing heavenly fires and the nafs is burning like heck. Salawat, immense fires, that's when we talked, Taseen tilka ayatul Qur'an. Taseen was the fire that Sayyidina Musa went into that presence. For the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad look what Allah gave as a gift, I'll send the fire to you. Nabi Musa had to go to a portal to see that flame. That fire that spoke to him is the heart of Prophet because who's in the heart of Prophet Allah said, I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth, I'm on the heart of my believer. If the heart of that believer speaks to you, what would he say? On Allah because that's where the Qur'an comes from. How you can get that fire without going to a portal? Because that's for Bani Israel, Ummat al-Muhammad Allah says, I send the fire to you with your durood al-Sharif. As soon as you make your durood al-Sharif, that fire begins to dress upon you, dress upon you, dress upon you. That dress comes loaded with the lights of Holy Qur'an, blessing, dressing, every dhikr of Allah that we do opens its reality only because you did your salawats. Allah's names don't open for anyone without the name of Sayyidina Muhammad How could Rahman and Raheem truly open for someone if the name of Sayyidina Muhammad Miftah Rahma is the key that unlocks everything from Allah Means they get a, a barakah but it's not opening. The opening has to come from the presence of Prophet and Isma Rasul enters in, unlocks the name of Allah dresses the servant, truly blesses the servant. So means they do their durood the sharif they do their, uh, their wazifas and awrads and surahs. <coughs> because of that reality they're dressed with di divinely fires divinely lights, divinely ornaments. When Allah says for Jummah, dress with the best of what you have, it's not buying a suit from the store. It's come with the dhikr of Allah dressed upon you. This is the best of dresses. As a result those whom are doing those practices, being cleaned at night, they follow the directions of the shaykh, begin to meditate. As soon as you meditate, as soon as you make intention for the shaykhs to appear, you're not saying, I just want to meditate and I don't know who's going to appear. <coughs> I call for the madad of my shaykhs and I recite exactly who I want to appear. As soon as you call, they're there. If the nation of Bani Israel could ask for a building and the one from knowledge could bring the building by a blink of an eye, what power you think Sayyidina, Sulema, Sayyidina Muhammad gave to his nation? They can bring buildings but who cares for a building? As soon as you call upon the shaykhs they're present right in front of you. This is the, the gift to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad They make their durood, Prophet lights are in front of them, dressing them, blessing them. As soon as they make their madad and call upon that madad, those lights are present with them, dressing them and beginning to pull their soul out. Come and loosen the bars of your zandan and as a result bring out the prisoner. He's 
being purchased. We gave those talks on what Prophet gave as an example for his holy companions. He purchased them from oppression, brought Sayyidina Bilal by Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as salam went to purchase the servant of Allah from the hands of shayateen. Why? So that we would understand with your love for Prophet your durood and all your, your expressions of love, Prophet will give a command to the holy companions, buy him from shaitan. If the command doesn't come, shaitan will never leave you alone. We know in 35 years of guidance people make intentions to leave their, their corrupt worlds but that corrupt world got the hand on their ankle and feet and keep dragging them back. You cannot get out, shaitan doesn't forget anybody's phone number. But they've been bought with their good character, the examples the shaykhs are teaching them, make your durood, do your good practices. So that a command from Prophet the Malik, the King, will be described in Surah Al Yusuf, Malik Al Aziz has to buy you, Allah sends a caravan to take you because everybody's been thrown in a chal in a hole and Allah has to send this caravan of awliya to pull you out and their job is to take you to the kingdom. Who's Malik al-Aziz that Allah is making reference in Qur'an is Sayyidina Muhammad Malik with Sifat al-Aziz that nothing stops that command. If a whole world wants to stop you, if Malik al-Aziz says, no it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Not a rizq, not a sustenance, not a anything can be stopped if Malik al-Aziz gives the command. So why make a deal with any lesser authority? So means these are the dresses and the blessings. As soon as they make their muraqabah, they're being brought out this light, being bought from shaitans, asking Prophet if you find a goodness in this servant and that they can bring a barakah for us, please buy him from shaitan. Then you have to be, the, the, the sahabi have to be dispensed, that's why the, the tariqahs are from companions. Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah is the only tariqah from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Siddiq al-Mutlaq whom Imam Ali comes to the tariqah after that to bring his blessings and dressings. The same Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq who freed Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi. Means this command has to come, the Sayyidina Abu Bakr has to be salam dispensed that Prophet will buy this one from shaitan, there is a barakah in this one. And as a result shaitan will be paid off and he, your number will be forgotten from him. Veiled what Surah Yaseen describes, we put a barrier in front of them and a barrier behind them, they don't see that servant. Because Malik al-Aziz has purchased that servant. As a result their job is to do their practices, do their practices. There is no failure in the practices, there's only failure in the person not doing it and mixing other garbage with it. As a result they do their practices, the bars are moved, immediately the shaykhs pull the soul out. It's not something hard because we described their souls are fuluk. So now kids see alien movies, those are fuluks, ships. They're astonished by the power of those ships. So look Baba, those ships they <laughs> Then they come and they make people disappear because shaitan has to use technologies to imitate these realities. But Allah's reality doesn't need any technology. The soul of a trained 
guide comes out. Anyone in their association the soul comes out, dresses everyone and uplifts everybody instantly. In an instant, take everybody on their fuluq, fuluq al-mash'oon. Why Surat Yaseen? Because it's heart of Qur'an and Sayyidina Muhammad is that heart. And Allah described, we have uh, created ships. In this understanding of Surah Yaseen is the heart, means the, the secrets of the heart that comes from Prophet This nation is not left to struggle, it's a nation that Allah gave many, many gifts to. But shaitan plays with them not to take it. So they practice, they cleanse themselves all night being cleaned of these. As soon as they make their tafakkur, follow the example, then these souls begin to come out. They begin to get dressed. Then we said before if you're studying sciences, as soon as you meditate you're no longer hatta dunya. You're entering the world of light. As soon as you make your tafakkur with the shaykhs and the presence of Prophet how long were you with them? This little bit of connection and it starts to work and you feel the presence of the shaykh, you feel that muraqabah, you think 10 minutes, 20 minutes transpired. But you entered into the world of light, your dunya says it was 10-15 minutes. But your akhirah Prophet describes in hadith, what? Tafakkur sa'ati, there are servants whom their tafakkur of one hour is like 70 years of worship. 70 years of worship. Means as soon as they entered into this malakut and this world of light, were they taken for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 2 years? If it's needed and the tafakkur was strong, Prophet is, is describing, they go one hour in that state, that real state in our presence is gone 70 years in this world of light. But you would have felt it like he was there only five minutes. <coughs> was Isra wa Miraj, Sayyidatana Isha salam, said his, his bed was still warm Wasallam. went, came back. Why? The same power that says we can bring in a blink of an eye. But that was in power of Qur'an, that was their book. But you're talking to the commander whom Manzil of Qur'an is emanating from his blessed soul. What type of powers he gave to the nation? They make your tafakkur, enter into our world of light. What may appear to be 10 minutes to you could be 10 years in their presence with a dress, with a faiz, with a blessing. 10 years for one hour, 70 years for one hour. What kind of reality is that? The people who do that let's say daily means that you could live thousands of lifetimes and you wouldn't achieve what their soul achieves because they do this every day. Means the immense blessings of this world of light is not something that can be imagined. And we talked about that if we bring out this soul, bring out the power of this soul and start to operate from a world of light, from the realities of light and what Sayyidina Muhammad wants to dress upon these souls and upon these realities, it can't be imagined. And if you talk too much about it people become dizzy in their head. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun wa mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, 
Our water well give the gift of life. Our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.